Hey, Russell, AKA Bell and Circuit. This is the beat breakdown for the beat I made last week. Link in the description, of course. Some people have been curious of more about the process and my intention was always to do more in depth dive on some of the compositional and technical pieces. This isn't super techie because I'm not super techie. But if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to try to answer them. Let me know if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in. I'm gonna keep doing the mass appeal rhythm roulette style thing as well, and then try to follow up with this sort of thing that I'm doing today. So come along, we'll hop into Ableton, and I'll show you what I did. So we're going to start in session view. So the first thing I did to build the beat was to use the drum sample, the drum loop. Uh, as you can see, I didn't do much to it. Uh, set a start point and a loop length and did not really mess with the timing uh, much other than Ableton's just straight warping thing that it does and we all love so much. So that's that beat. So then the next thing I did was rearrange and cut out certain parts of it. So you get this piece. And you get the crazy dance thing that sounds like this. So both of those things were made or curated, if you will, uh, using a plugin from Sugar Bites called Egoist. And this is what it looks like. You can load a sample in here. So I've loaded my beat sample in there. And then you can use these randomize dice buttons here to mess stuff up and have it change things for you. So it will reverse stuff. It will leave slices out. Uh, sometimes it can do really stupid stuff. So obviously you have to like keep trying. Do I like that? Oh, maybe I want to, you know, move stuff around, rearrange it. So it's all about curation and uh, trying to find something that's cool. If you use something stupid, it'll sound stupid. So this is how I arrived at the rearranged beat that we uh, were looking at a minute ago. You can also use the dice to randomly select some weird pitch changes. So it'll randomly change slices based on its internal craziness and repitch stuff. So that's how I got that dance loop. That's Egoist. If people are more interested in that, obviously there's a lot more to it. There's a lot of depth to it. Uh, I've just really scratched the surface, but if people are interested in uh, that, let me know and I can go through a little bit more of how my process works with that. I sliced out the kick from the original sample. And that was just by using clip automation. So I just have it automated full volume or no volume, depending on whether there's a kick or not. A snares is just some little piece out of a sample. I don't know whether it came from a rearranged sample or an original sample. And it's really annoying on its own, but you'll see how all these things get layered together when we um, hop over to arrangement view in a minute. The song starts with this weird ambience that is a sample. Not much done to it. And that, again, is just used to get a little bit of uh, vibe 
One of the other main melodic samples originally came from this. And I stretched that quite a bit to change the pitch and then re-rendered it out to get something like this. And then took that and pitched that and used follow action so that you get a nice chord progression. There's also this swirl sample. It has these punctuated staccato hits that I really messed with the timing on. So not anything at all like what the original sample was. And so you can see I've really stretched, pushed and pulled this so that it will work with the rhythm samples. One thing you might notice uh, is that the length is four and a half bars. Uh, and for example, the voices sample that we were talking about uh, is three, three bars and three beats. Um, so what that means is that these things won't loop in perfect sync with the beat. They'll be off and then they'll come back around. With the voices, it's kind of an odd timing and that's fine because it's just an ambient sample. And I like how that doesn't fall on the same uh, loop point as everything else. With this swirl sample, because it's four and a half, it will then eventually come back and sync up with the beats. So anyway, I like doing that because it gives it a little more movement, a little more uh, life. The other main melodic element is the saxophone solo, and it's a it's a single long solo or passage as you can see here and I just take little snippets of it and then arrange it to make a different progression so you you have this drone which is just like this long sustained thing then we have this progression which is at the beginning of that passage and that will automatically go into another part that's a little further down in the passage and I'm arranging that to make a progression of my own liking. Okay, we're in the arrangement view now and the first, the song starts out with the vo vocal samples as uh, I indicated before. Come in with the rearranged saxophone and eventually we get to this happy accident with the rearrange, rewind, scratchy stuff. So what happened there was I was just had one long recording of all my samples and it was just recording everything I was doing on the turntable. So when I was rewinding back, uh, to get to the beginning of a sample so I could start cleanly, that got recorded. And I thought, well, that was cool. And so that is now the beginning of the song, sort of the lead in to, to the beat. So as the track progresses, we get a little further down and stretched and pitched chord progression with the bass and keys. Then we get to the transition to the next spot where I start kicking in the various other percussion elements layered over the top. And one thing that I like to do is to drop the beat out a little bit just to give the neck section a little more oomph. So you'll hear it here. So 
So it's really uh, subtle, but uh, I like it. Gives a little more life. Gives a little more interest as we go into the next section. So the next section starts with the rearranged beat and the layered kick over the top. We then get down into the dance loop. Eventually we come down here and I add in the snares just to get a little bit of an old school, very little bit of an old school jungle vibe um, right into a lovely drop with just a sustained saxophone note. I guess it's not saxophone at that point, but anyway. Bass and keys come in here, back beat. Essentially, the second half of the song is pretty much the same as the first. I just kind of mix it up. Processing was mainly EQ. Drums have an EQ. Cut out a lot of the low end and then boosted the very bottom of the low end that was left. The percussion track, which is the snares and kicks, have some really weird extreme EQing and some compressor just to give it some uh, some pumping. And the dance track uh, just had some bit reduction on it to make it sound shittier than it even actually was. The bass sample had some EQ, the keys, apparently nothing and FX nothing other than I'm sending it to my return track, which has a plug-in chain that I made uh, with a ambient dubby reverb setting and then the Ableton built-in fade to gray, which is pretty crazy and I use it on everything and I love it and I'll be happy to go into and show more examples of that if people are interested. My master chain is just my, what I jokingly refer to as pre-mastering, which I'm just putting the glue compressor on the entire master bus and then a limiter to make sure that I don't blow up my speakers. And that is that. See you next time.